Yeah, I got your country right here. And uh, one guy is buddy of mine, a long time buddy of mine, been out there trying to get a grasp on what the what the country's doing, what the country's thinking. Is it what we're told from Washington that we're all just bitter and clinging to our Bibles and our guns? Okay, actually, I'm packing heat, so I am clinging to my gun. Um, and you know, most folks know which one you use and which one you hold and, and which one you load. Uh, have you got that clip, Andrew? On th- this is really one of the clips that helped precipitate our buddy Todd Starnes writing this book about dispatch from bitter America. Are we bitter? Are we divided? The President of the United States told us when he was running for president that we're bitter, divided, clinging to our guns and Bibles. But the truth is is that our challenge is to get people persuaded that we can make progress uh, when there's no evidence of that in their daily lives. And you go into some of these small towns in, in, in Pennsylvania, a lot of, like a lot of small towns in the Midwest, yeah, the jobs have been gone now for 25 years and nothing's replaced them. And they've gone through the Clinton administration and the Bush administration, and each successive administration has said that somehow these communities are going to regenerate, and they have not. So it's not surprising then that they get better and they cling to guns or religion or uh, antipathy toward people who aren't like them or anti-immigrant sentiment or you know, anti-trade sentiment and a way to explain their frustrations. Uh, now these are in some communities. I, you know, I think what you'll find is, is that people of every background, um, they're going to be a mix of people. You, you can go out the toughest neighborhood and, uh, you know, working class, much pale folks, and you'll find Obama enthusiasts. Uh, and you can go into places where you think that I'd be very strong and people will just be skeptical. Um, the important thing is that you show up and you're doing what you're doing. So, because of the Barack Obama, four years ago, uh, telling folks that we are just bitter, clinging our Bibles, America is divided. And the challenge for them is to show that that change is here. You know, here we are four years later. That's still going to be his challenge. Todd Starnes in with uh, his second great uh, new book uh, about uh, America, spending some time traveling around the country, dispatches from bitter America. Todd, we've been friends for a long time. Good Congratulations, first of all. You see him on Fox. You see him, hear him on, uh, on Fox News Radio. He's got uh, his second big uh, bestseller out. That clip is really what precipitated you to do this book and find out, are we bitter or are we divided? That, that's true, Stephen. Look, it's great to be back in the South. You know, I live in Brooklyn, been there for, for the past seven years. South Brooklyn. Yeah, South, South, South Brooklyn, so I've been at Fox. <laughs> I live among the indigenous liberal population, so uh, the, the skinny jeans people. Uh, and uh, like National Geographic, you just take pictures and think, you know, this is a bizarre culture. Steve, here, folks. Steve you're not going to believe it. Actually, I actually do tweet pictures. Uh, one day I was walking down the, uh, the sidewalk, and one of the stores had valet parking for baby strollers. Ballet. Honestly, ballet ballet parking for baby strollers. They low jack the baby strollers in Brooklyn. You got to do what years you got to do. Years ago, I was I was in New York City and and this bike messenger comes screaming around the corner, no shirt on, just the tight bike pants, just screaming around the corner. Uh, this little old lady and her daughter are walking through uh, through the crosswalk, literally al- almost knocks them down. The little old lady like stumbles and falls back. This guy to try and avoid them whips his wheel. He goes tumbling off his bike. And this all just happens in a moment. We're standing there on the street corner, and he pops back on his bike. He's cussing them, giving them fingers. They're cussing him, giving him fingers. And and you know you're just watching this scene unfold. It's like you're in another world. And there's just these other folks standing next to us on the same street corner. We don't know them, never seen them, but clearly they're not from New York either. And this guy turns around and goes. We ain't in Kansas anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and you live that. You got that right. We have a, we actually have a southern restaurant in New York or in, in New York that just opened called Gravy. And you would think that the restaurant named Gravy would actually serve gravy. So I went in there and they had something on the menu called arugula smear. I didn't know if I was supposed to eat it or wipe it. Do they I have mean, sweet tea? I mean, no do they sweet at least tea. have sweet no tea? No sweet tea. And it's no a su- southern it's restaurant. A southern restaurant. I think the challenge is... Fodor's is probably rated as the best Southern restaurant in New York City. But but these are the types of places that President Obama <laughs> likes to likes to frequent. Uh, you know, the uh, the arugula-loving love, If anybody would eat arugula have. smear, it would be him. It would be, the, it would be the president and the first lady. Okay. But, uh, yeah, you know, I got, when I heard the president say uh, people who cling to their guns and religion are bitter Americans, I got to thinking about something, Steve. You know, I am a gun-toting, chicken-eating son of a Baptist. And I don't think I'm all that bitter. And most of my people, uh, I grew up in uh, North Mississippi, uh, uh, cling to their guns. 
friends, and uh, they, they go to church on Sunday, and they eat barbecue. Sometimes they do all three at the same time, and, and I don't think they're bitter at all. So I went on this journey across the country to find out, what are people thinking about? Uh, I wanted to talk to the bitter clingers, and ultimately this book, uh, Dispatches from Bitter America, is a, uh, is a salute uh, to the bitter clingers of our country, the people who believe that the traditional values, God, country, family, those values mean something, and they matter. Uh, and, and then you have liberals like President Obama who've done everything in their power to try to uh, tear down those values. It, it really is a sad day in the country. They don't get us. I mean, the, the folks that live in New York and the salons in San Francisco and the elite Georgetown townhouses in Washington, D.C., they don't get flyover country. They don't get you know, America. They don't get when they go into small towns and people are flying flags in front of their little house year-round, not just on the 4th of July. They no, don't get who we are. No, Steve, you're absolutely right. And remember when we were in New Hampshire, when, when you fly into Boston, you, you, you drive up, you cross over the state line, what do you see? You see a Cracker Barrel restaurant, you see a lot of pickup trucks, and you see a sign for a NASCAR racetrack. I mean, uh, with, with the accents, we could be uh, in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. And the, the point is that people in Manchester have much more in common with the folks in Alabama or in Nashville uh, than they do with the folks over in Boston. So I think at the end of the day, the big cities and the the liberals who live there are the anomalies in this country. And and quite frankly, the majority of the country, we share the same values. And those values are being attacked not just in Washington, D.C. and at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, but also in Hollywood. So, uh, yeah, everybody looks down on us. Everybody, you know, you know trashes uh, our beliefs. But at the end of the day, most Americans believe in God, country, and family. And they don't understand, for example, when they start telling us, that, you know, we need to drive these little electric tiny cars that if you got a couple of kids and you got soccer gear that just doesn't fit the lifestyle that most of red state america has because you can't cram that stuff into a little car that doesn't even have a back seat that's true look my uncle jerry at uh, north mississippi my aunt lynn was trying to be environmentally friendly so she bought him what uh, my uncle calls one of those metrosexual cars and uh, he said he went out deer hunting and he did <laughs> He said he didn't know if he was supposed to put the deer on the on the car or the car on the deer. So it's like, what do you do? So look, uh, you know, I I grew up uh, listening and reading to Louis Grizzard and uh, Irma Bombeck, some of the great uh, writers who had a conservative bent, and uh, and and that's really who influenced my writing style. And that's really in the book. I mean, it it's kind of Louis Grizzard meets Alexis de Tocqueville. I mean, yeah. that's. It, it is. I'm not, that, that, you're kind of tokeful esque. Yeah, well, th- well, thank you. Yeah, we, we want to have a little bit of fun, and we also have some. We also have some great interviews in there with uh, with. I want to smear you by comparing you to a French guy, but I, I'm not going to take that personally. <laughs> <students. laughs> <laughs> what did you find out? I mean, you know, they they tell us we're divided, that we're red state, blue state, but within the red state territory, like you said, New Hampshire, Michigan, Mississippi, there is a commonality. Well, there certainly is, and it's look. It's being backed up again on this. We've been on this national book tour, you know, twenty country or twenty cities uh, in the past few days, and people are are very concerned about what this president is doing to the country. And we outlined some of these attacks, especially his attacks on religious liberty. And we're going to talk a little bit about that and what's fueling the Santorum rise uh, when we come back in a moment with more with uh, Todd Starnes. The book is uh, Bitter America: Dispatches from uh, from the Real World, where most of us reside and live. Uh, in your book tour around the country, are you going to all 57 states? <laughs> We're back in a moment. This is the Steve Gill Show. <laughs> 